Okay guys, in this video I am going to be demonstrating um, cube mapping for reflective objects uh, and reflection mapping. Uh, we're going to do some glow, uh, glow mapping uh, using a camera filter and we're going to then uh, go into some light baking. Uh, light baking is a method by which we take our interactive lights um, in our scene and then bake them down to what is essentially texture maps on our object which um, alleviates a lot of the uh, load on the graphics card and the CPU and speeds up our our uh, <coughs> real-time rendering considerably all right so what I have here is I have my Cornell box uh, I guess I'm gonna start calling this thing a Cornell dungeon because uh, it kinda looks like a dungeon We've got this little grate here in the ceiling, and then we've got uh, a sunlight uh, poking through, and then we have concrete walls. I've got some capsules in here that I'm going to use uh, to demonstrate different effects um, in the lighting, uh, as well as I'm going to use a couple of these guys for uh, reflection mapping. Um, <coughs> I have my entire uh, Unity Cornell box uh, as a prefab here and this was an imported Maya file um, I have a first person controller which I brought in here um, it's just a typical Unity first person controller uh, and then I have a directional light and the directional light is the light source that's outside of my box here that is casting the shadow down onto my objects. I have my light shafts uh, dummy object that uh, this is the technique I showed you guys last week um, where we basically use an alpha map to simulate a volumetric light effect uh, coming through the grate on the ceiling. And then um, after that we have a point light and the point light in this scene I am just using to illuminate, if I turn it on, let's see here, and if I delete my light maps that I've already made, there we go. Alright, if I turn on my point light, and I'm basically just using this to kind of illuminate the room just a little bit. I want to keep the room kind of dark and sourcey, as if the, the only light coming into this room is from the, the sunlight that's coming through the grate in the ceiling. And the reason why I keep it dark like that is because I want to demonstrate um, the use of, I'm going to create a neon light, which is kind of an effect. Uh, kind of have to fake a neon light in order to make it look like neon. Um, it's kind of involved uh, to get it to look right. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, there is a spotlight there that I should delete. And so that's it. I just have a, in this scene, I have a directional light, which is the light outside, casting the shadows down into my room. There's the shadows from the grate in the ceiling. Um, and then just a point light. And the point light is just kind of providing, uh, faking an ambient light of the, the sunlight through the ceiling coming in to the floor. Uh, okay, let's go. So the first thing I want to show you guys is, um, a number of people were asking about reflective materials and so I did a little research and I found a nice little utility uh, that makes this very very easy which is always good right whenever something can be easier than harder that's uh, typically the way to go alright so what it is is it is a, a uh, script and so over here I have uh, here's the master folder that I'm using today. You can find this on the Kong. Uh, in there, in this folder, so EFTA Lecture 8, Glow and Reflection Mapping, uh, Glow, Reflection, and Light Mapping, we have a folder in there called Unity Scripts, and in there, there is this one right here called Cube Map Generator. If I go into that folder and I double click, uh, it has a folder in here called Editor. So if you're out there grabbing Unity scripts off the internet or uh, shaders or whatever, if you go into the folders that the scripts are in, 
it gives you a little hint about where they want you to put it. So if I go into the cube map generator folder, they have a folder there called editor. So what I did was I just looked over here in my game and I said, do I have a similar folder? And sure enough, right there, I have an editor folder. So I'm assuming that that's where they want me to put these scripts. So I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna grab all of these scripts and I'm gonna drag them into that editor folder. And Unity will do its little thing, hopefully. Okay. And then there's my scripts. All right. Uh, and the one I'm looking for is generate cube map. And so, nope. Uh, when I did this before, it actually gave me a window. There it is. Excellent. So I think it took a second for it to uh, create this little menu item. So after you import those scripts into the editor folder, once the software recognizes the scripts are in there, it'll create a tools menu item. And so that's how you know that that script has been loaded. So once I see that tools menu item, I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So I click on tools and there's the script I just brought in, which is generate cube maps. It has two options on selected and on all, okay? Uh, on selected is probably the way to go. So if you have something, if you have an object in your scene that needs to be reflective, I'm gonna make sure I make use the right ones here. And before I do this, I'm gonna take my point light and I'm going to uh, boost the range here a little bit to give it a little bit more light in the room than I actually want because I want to demonstrate this utility. Okay, so I'm gonna select uh, this capsule right here and in order for this script to work we first have to assign a uh, a reflective material to the object in order for the script to actually work all right and i want to do something really fast here uh, i want to go into my light mapping utility and i do not want to see the resolution i'm just creating this i'll show you guys what this thing does later but I want to hide that and then now I can come back in here. Okay, uh, so what I need to do is create a reflective material for this capsule. So I'm going to come over here into my materials folder and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create material and I'm just going to call this one reflective Uh, maybe I'll call it Chrome. Okay. And once I have that material made, what I want to do is I want to come over here into the inspector and I want to change the shader type. So I'm going to click on the current shader, which is diffuse, and it's going to give me the drop down menu here. And the type of uh, shader I want to use is a reflective shader. So I'm going to use a reflective shader. Uh, you can use a bumped. Uh, specular, that's what you would use if you had a normal map and a specul specularity value. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to do a regular old diffuse because I just want this thing to be like a mirror finish, like a chrome and uh, reflect only. So diffuse is going to be the one that's going to work there. All right, now that I have a reflective material, I'm going to assign it to this capsule over here by the wall. And now that I have the material assigned, I can actually go to that tools menu that we just created and the generate cube map script and I can say on selected it's going to pop up this little dialog box here and it has a color uh, where you can actually tint the color of the object if you want so if there was like a light source or something in the room and you wanted to have that same color you could do that uh, in this case I just want it to be chromish and the darker the color I give it the more reflective it's going to appear. So I'm going to give it kind of like a dark gray material or a dark gray color. And then the resolution, we can leave that alone at uh, 128 by 128. Um, and then reflect, I'm going to say everything. So this is where I could tell it to reflect or not reflect certain things. 
um, and then I'm going to go ahead and say generate. And the moment I do that, you can see here, if I go in and look at this capsule, it is now reflecting the objects in this space. So this little light right there is this light over here on the floor. Uh, you can see my blue wall on one side and my red wall on the other side and then there is the grate in the top of the ceiling. So it's kind of a nifty little utility um, to be able to do this. Now the downside to using this um, is that if your object needs to move around the scene you'll find out pretty quickly once you do that that the cube map does not change relative to where the object is in the room. For like, for example, my capsule here, as I'm moving it towards the light here on the ground, should actually be reflecting the light on the ground. And so reflective objects are kind of problematic in real time graphics because uh, in order to get this to work correctly, if my object was moving around the room, I would actually have to make several different cube maps and then have a script that loads those different cube maps based on this object's position in the room. And so um, typically you are not going to want to do uh, reflectivity, full-blown reflectivity on an object that moves. You're going to want to keep that on your static objects. Um, otherwise there's going to be some extra scripting involved. Uh, another thing you can do though that uh, can help is this script will actually bake the cube map, the reflection map, based on where my object is in the room. So for example, if this were an interactive object that I did want to move around, I could kind of give it the best possible scenario here um, by moving it to the center of the room and generating a cube map, reflection map, based on the center of the room so that I could have basically the uh, overall layout for the reflection map whoops trying to get that one there we go so that the reflection map would be um, based upon the object's center position you can see that as the objects moving around the room it's kind of uh, it's reflecting that that great pattern there on the floor too much but as I move it around it's a little bit more realistic uh, than when I had had the reflection map baked when it was over there in the darkness in the corner and so um, that's just something to think about uh, when you're using reflection mapping uh, if you want it to work easily you want to do it on static objects in your scene and not um, not dynamic objects that have to move uh, or else you're going to have to do some scripting and generate several of these for uh, for your object Okay, so that is reflectivity. Uh, it's a very nice effect, though, when you do, do want to use it on a static object. The next thing I want to show you guys is glows. All right, so a lot of people are uh, needing to do glow type objects for lighting, lights, and whatnot. And so I want to show you how that works. I have this little neon light that I made over here on my wall. And this is just a very simple neon O. Uh, over here mounted on like a little concrete pad and I want to make this thing look self illuminated so as if the light source is emanating from the object itself if you'll notice over here in my game view in my game window uh, you can see that the lighting is kind of a little bit more dynamic than it is in this view so if I look at the grate there the shadows being cast on the floor and the light pooling. You'll see here um, it's very straight and uninterrupted and in the game view it's kind of getting a little blown out here and it looks a little bit more blown out here on the ceiling where the lights coming through and this looks a little bit more dynamic. And so I want to show you what I did um, in order to achieve this effect. And it's also what you have to do in order to get a glow or glowing material on an object. All right, so here's how it works. Um, you need to select your camera in your scene, so main camera. In this case, my main camera is assigned to my first person uh, 
controller and I'm gonna go over here and select the camera and if you'll notice it loads up here in the inspector and it has this effect right here glow effect script all right if I turn that off notice what happens oh my god my dynamic lighting disappears if I turn that back on oh okay that looks pretty good again so I want to delete this guy so I'm gonna remove it and then I want to reassign it and I want to show you how I got how I got this effect onto my light all right so the first thing that I had to do was I had to go to assets in my project window and I had to say import package and the package that I imported to get this effect is called image effects and then it has the pro only so if you're running this at home and you have the free version you will not be able to do this if you're at school and you have the pro license uh, have at it you'll have a good time so if I want to import this I want to go to assets and I'm going to say uh, import package and I'm looking for image effects pro only and then so I go ahead and say yes I want to import that it's going to open up this little dialog and then uh, if I hadn't loaded it already I would go ahead and say import but I've already loaded it so I'm going to close that and just show you how this thing works okay so I'm going to select the main camera here and I'm going to click on add component and that's how we're going to add the glow and what I like to do is I just say add component and then I come up here into the search line and I just type in glow all right and then there's my glow glow uh, deprecated I'm not sure what the deprecated means but that's the one we want glow I'm gonna go ahead and add the glow whoa if you'll notice in my game view we can see the effects of the glow and so in your scene view you cannot see the effects of the glow because it does not happen until render time in the game this particular effect actually uses the out alpha channel of the final image and then applies the glow as kind of like a post process. Um, so I think the reason they do it that way is because it's very inexpensive and uh, doesn't probably require a lot of uh, load on the graphics processor or the computer. And so it's probably pretty fast. Um, I've been playing around with it though and it works pretty well. I'm getting really good results so I'm pretty happy with it. Here's how it works. So I'm going to come over here into the glow effect. We have first a glow intensity. And so if I click and drag in here, we can dial that up to an obnoxious level. So that'd be cool if you needed like an explosion effect or something. You could have everything blow out. Or if you just want to dial it down to kind of uh, a usable level, I recommend taking this down very, very, very low. I think I was even doing a 0.01 I think is what I was getting good results on so 0 0.01 then we have the blur iterations blur iterations are basically going to be how far it's going to blur out whatever the glow object is you want to be careful with this one because the blur is kind of what is going to make the object look as if it is self illuminated so I'm going to go into the engine here go right into the game so that I can get up close on these guys and you can kind of see the glow effect it creates this halo around the objects and this one's going to be a little bit better because it's got the blue wall next to it and you can see this little tiny halo that goes around the object so it's kind of a fine line between um, blurring it out to where it's more realistic so and this kind of just ends up having a fog effect but I kind of lose my halo on my object which is uh, maybe not desirable depending on what it is I'm trying to accomplish it's not bad here on the floor but on if I'm trying to make like a neon sign which is what I'm about to make then you want to be careful not to blur your do the blur iteration so so much that you don't receive a halo around the object so I'm going to take these down a little bit more I think I had a value of 8 that I liked it was pretty good and then we have the blur spread and the blur spread is also going to work similar to the halo it's just going to spread the blur out um, and you can play with the run, play around with that until you get uh, the effect you're looking for I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 0.5 alright and then we also have a glow tint so 
if you had all the lights in your scene or a um, master light source that you wanted to kind of tint everything uh, to glow uh, and receive a color so I'll just make it red just to show you you could kind of do that I don't actually have that in this scene I have a bunch of mixed lights I have a sunlight coming through the ceiling and then I'm also going to make this a neon light and so for me I probably just want to make this thing you know uh, standard medium ish uh, white something like that maybe not all the way white see I can take down the intensity of the glow also by taking down the intensity of that color and so I'm going to kind of keep it semi white Maybe a little bit less and knock it down a little bit okay and we're gonna have to come back here and adjust the glow uh, in concert with adjusting our self illuminating material in order to get this neon effect alright so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come over here to my neon light source which is this little ring right here in my scene file in my scene view alright and then I need to create a material for this and the type of material we want to use in concert with the glow shader on the camera is a self-illuminating shader. So I'm going to go over here to my materials folder. And I already made one here. And what it is, it's a neon blue, is what I called it. And what it is, is it is a self-illuminating. So I got it right here from the... Uh, self alume and I just did a self alume diffuse all right I'm gonna go ahead and make it again though just so you guys can see the process I'm gonna say create and then I'm gonna do a material I'm gonna call this neon blue 2 all right and then now that I have my material created I can double click on it and get it in the inspector and then I need to assign a shader to it so that's the way all materials in uh, Unity work, you need a material, then after you have the material you need to assign a shader. The shader kind of tells Unity what the rendering properties of that uh, material are going to be. So what I want to use here is right down here, I want to use a self alum material. And because I don't want any of the extra stuff on it, I'm just going to do a straight, a regular old diffuse. And now that I have the diffuse color assigned, you'll notice that if I assign this to the object, I'm going to drag it right on there, that my uh, neon uh, circle here just kind of turns white as if it's illuminated from a source. That's what self-illumination does, right? And then it also has a main color. So if I click on that, I want this light to be kind of blue. So I'm going to come in here and the light source itself should be very, very bright. So I'm going to kind of give it a bright blue and uh, we have some other options here we have a base mesh this is where we can use a texture map and the texture map can have an RGB component which will also colorize the uh, the self alum material uh, and then there is a gloss a glossiness map that you can also use which would be very useful for doing a neon light um, if I was going to do this for real and not just kind of showing you guys how it works uh, I'd get pretty detailed in terms of my map. I'd have a, a base map and a glossiness map uh, to make it appear as if parts of the uh, the neon lamp were not illuminating uh, the same. Uh, and then we have an Illum channel also, which comes from the alpha channel also. So if you see a little A there, that means it's coming from the alpha channel. I'm not going to use those because um, that's a little bit more in depth. I want to keep this kind of basic at first. Once we get it rigged up, then we can go in and tweak that uh, further. So for now, we're just going to leave that alone. Okay, so I have a self alum uh, diffuse on my neon light, and I'm going to go into the game and test it, see how it looks. I'm going to come over here and run right up to it and check it out. When I get up to it, it's got that nice little halo on it, as if it is a neon lamp uh, that is illuminated. And then I'm going to kill this. If I want to intensify that halo, uh, you can make the light a little bit brighter. And that should have the effect of, once I get up on close to it, intensifying the halo a little bit. 
the other only other way to do it is to go back here and select that main camera in the first person camera uh, controller and increase the glow intensity so if I come over here and increase the glow intensity to say one and I go back into the engine and I run right up to my light there should be a little bit more of a halo this time all right and so it's kind of it's a bit of a drawback though because once I start increasing the glow to get the proper halo on my lamp there it's going to affect other things like the sunlight there on the floor is glowing a little bit more and you can see the glow over here with respect to the wall is also glowing a little bit more and so unfortunately um, as far as I can tell there's no way to assign a glow individually to an individual object you kind of have to uh, apply it to the camera lens and then tweak the settings between the self loom map and the, the glow settings on the camera in order to get everything to harmonize. So there will be a little bit of back and forth um, getting everything into this, the proper values for this uh, effect to work. Alright, so I'm going to exit the game and my glow intensity was a little bit too extreme for me there so I'm going to change it to a 0.5. I did like the extra spread uh, but the one was just a little bit too much, so I'm going to take that down. Alright, the next thing I want to do, I also uh, wanted to make my neon blue a little less bright. I want to make it a little bit more blue there. And then after that, I want to now make this thing look as if it's illuminating the room. So the first thing I want to do is I want to grab my point light. And I want to take the range down and I want to darken this room a little bit. And so notice as I darken the room and I make it really sourcey, so as if that sunlight is just coming through the, the hole in the ceiling there. And then I'm going to jump into my game to see how this looks. And now I've got very dark corners and now the effect is that that uh, neon light there on the wall is actually looking like it's illuminating much better than it was and that's just because I've taken away some of the lighting from the point light that was illuminating the space. Alright, you might also notice something else. If I go over to my, to my reflection object that I created, that little capsule, my neon light there on the wall is not present in my reflection in my capsule. And that is because um, I made this reflection map, the cube map, before I actually created my little neon light there. So if you want to update your reflection maps using that utility, you actually have to, once you've changed all the lighting and the objects in your scene, you actually have to run the script one more time on the object. So if I want my neon light to reflect into my little capsule there, I have to select the capsule and then go to Tools, uh, Generate Cube Maps on Selected. I'm going to go kind of dark on that and then I'm going to say generate and if everything went correctly I should be able to see my little neon light there in my reflection object excellent there it is a little halo there okay cool uh, so that's just something for for you guys to know if you're going to use that script uh, you may have to regenerate the cube map uh, from time to time um, okay uh, so now for the neon light. I want to create the effect that that light now is illuminating not only the room but it's also giving off light and casting shadows on my little capsule here. And so I want to make this look more realistic. All right, There's a couple different ways I can do this. There's kind of the inexpensive way which I'll show you first and then there's the more expensive way uh, which I will show you second. So if you want to make this as an interactive effect, meaning that this light is a real-time light that you are not going to bake out to a light map, this is probably the method that I would take uh, for the for uh, making this thing look like a true uh, neon light that's actually illuminating the scene. And the first thing I would do here is I'm going to go into Component, uh, no, wrong one, uh, Game Objects, create other and I'm going to create a uh, spotlight and then I'm going to move my spotlight up 
and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it's pointing right at I'm going to zero this thing first, so I'm going to say reset, and I want to rotate it so that it's facing right at that wall. There we go. So that uh, ends up being zero, negative 180, negative 180. Okay, I just want it to be perfectly flat and pointing at the wall. And now I'm going to move it over here in space so that it is illuminating my O right there and then I'm going to push it in a little bit closer to the wall I'm going to center it up inside of my neon light I'm going to change the spot angle so that it's kind of illuminating the uh, mount, the frame that it was on and the wall itself All right. and now what I want to do is I want to make it look as if this neon light is actually casting the light on the wall and into the scene. And so what I did was I made a little uh, cookie. And so I'll show you what the cookie looks like. This is my cookie. A cookie is basically like a stencil uh, that you make with a grayscale image. And so my cookie here is in my alpha channel of my image. And I'm gonna use this cookie to basically ask, act like a mask on my light. And so what the way it works is wherever it's white inside the alpha channel, the light is going to be emitted 100%, and then layers of levels of gray are going to be you know whatever their value are between uh, you know 50% to 75% whatever, and then black is not going to cast any light whatsoever. So it's kind of like a mask, and uh, the Unity calls it a cookie. So here's my mask. I'm going to bring my mask into Unity. And so I've already also done that. Uh, I have actually imported my entire Maya project into my Unity directory. And I have that image sitting here in my images directory inside of the Maya project. And I have the texture map right here and it's called Neon Zero Cookie. All right. Once my texture is imported into Unity, and you guys already know how to do that, uh, what I need to do is select that texture map and under the texture type I have to tell Unity what kind of texture it is. So over here in the inspector once I select my texture I'm going to come over here to texture type and I need to tell it by default it comes in as a texture that's the texture type. I want to change this to cookie so I'm going to say cookie and then uh, light type you have to tell it what kind of light is going to project this cookie and it happens to be a spotlight so I'm going to say spotlight and then I already have an alpha channel in this image so I do not need to use this which is if your image didn't have an alpha channel you could say alpha from grayscale and click that box and it would work but I already have an alpha channel in my image so I can just go ahead and say apply alright now that I have that cookie what I need to do is come over here to that spotlight and right here on the spotlight we notice we have this little cookie input here and currently there is none it just says none texture if I click on that it's going to bring up my little dialog my texture dialog and I'm going to type neon because I knew I called this thing neon zero and there's my cookie so I'm going to double click and if you'll notice here immediately in my scene view my light source went from illuminating evenly within that circle to now there's no light being output in the middle of the circle which is very nice because that is the exact effect that a neon light has uh, if you do a little research you'll see neon lights um, are the brightest right under where they're being illuminated from so I am also going to change my spot angle a little bit to get it so this neon light is being illuminated just around the image there and here's where I can change my color. So the color of my neon light was blue. So I'm going to do a color and I'm going to go into blue and I want to do kind of an intense blue darker than the light blue on the neon light. And there we go. That's kind of my first effect. Okay, now 
Uh, if I go into the game and I'm just going to play that to kind of see how that looks. Let's go running over there. Starting to look like a neon light, right? Except for we got one problem. It's not really illuminating the rest of the room, right? It's just illuminating the neon portion of the, of the wall, but I'm not getting any shadows on my capsule here. I'm not getting any shadows on the frame on the wall. I'm not getting any lighting on the wall. And so this is kind of a two part effect. If I want this thing to look correct, I'm going to have to create a second light, which I'm going to use for illumination. So this first spotlight with the cookie was kind of what I used to achieve the effect of the neon glow. And then the second point light that I'm about to create, I'm going to use that to actually illuminate the scene and cast shadows like a neon light would. All right. So I'm going to come in here and say, uh, game object, create other, and I'm going to do a uh, point light. And my point light comes into my scene. And I actually want this to cast shadows. Alright. And I'm going to put it about approximately where it would be uh, on the uh, neon light source. And then again, I'm going to change this to be blue. And I'm going to go with a darker blue. because the farther the light gets away from the light source, the darker and less intense and blue it gets. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna play with my range. There we go. All right, that's looking better. And I kinda of wanna make it look like that light is illuminating that entire side of the room. If you'll notice now, this is nice because now we're getting the light illuminating on my capsule there. It's illuminating the wall and it's starting to look a little bit more natural. Now what I want to do though, is I want to turn on the shadows because this light, if it were on in the room and it were dark on this side of the room, I'd get a subtle shadow being cast on my capsule. So I'm going to come over here to the light on my point light and I'm going to turn on uh, soft shadows and check it out. There we go. We got a nice soft shadow on my capsule now. And here's where I can play with the, the strength of the shadow. So if I don't want it to be that hard of a shadow, I can kind of pull that down. Uh, if there was a sunlight over there competing uh, with this light, I definitely would not get that hard of a shadow uh, on my object. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down a little bit, a little bit less. All right. And then I can go into the game and kind of play test this and see how it looks. All right, not bad. I got a, a real time shadow there. I got my light illuminating. It's illuminating that side of the room. Uh, I got my reflection map here and my object. And if I were doing this for a real time lighting effect, this would be how I would create it. Okay. Uh, I would want to do one other thing though. I'd want to come back over here to my uh, capsule that has my reflection map on it and I've changed the lighting completely since I've uh, built this last reflection map so I want to select that capsule and I want to build that map reflection map again so I'm going to go to select that capsule and say generate cube maps on selector and there we go I'm going to make it kind of a dark gray simulate like a chrome and then there we go I've rebaked my cube map which has the new reflective uh, lighting and it's not bad actually it looks pretty good so it's reflecting the neon uh, lamp right there in the top of my object I'm getting a nice blue light source uh, from the side and um, the only thing that's kind of wrong with this I guess is this little highlight there in the middle of the image and that's being uh, caused by my point light here uh, just rendering basically a, uh, a highlight there on my my wall and so I have two options for that I could um, pull this thing out a little bit wider and that actually looks a little bit better I could come out really wide and then that kind of gets rid of the highlight uh, but it also shortens up my shadow there so it's just kind of like you know um, 
one or the other. If you want a long shadow, you're going to have to push that closer to the wall. If you want it to look a little bit better, you're going to have to pull it away. Uh, this would actually work for, uh, if you did not have too many of these in your scene, this would work as a dynamic light setup because we only have two lights and we're kind of achieving the effect of the, uh, of the neon lamp. And you can see another problem here when I move the light out. Look, it blows out my neon light considerably. So I'd actually have to come back here into my point light now and say, you know what, man? That intensity is way too much. So I'm going to drag that down. Go back in. This is looking a little bit better. And that's not bad. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I would probably tweak that a lot more, but uh, for the purposes of saving time, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Now, let's talk about another way to accomplish uh, complex lighting effects inside of Unity. And one thing that I want to point out here is if I turn on the stats in the game view, we can see here that it gives us a bunch of information about our our game and, their, and its performance. And one of the things that kind of slows your game down is the draw calls. So draw calls are right here, and if you'll notice my draw calls on this scene are about 47 right now when I'm looking at those lights. And if I look up at the ceiling, I'm just kind of looking around and I'm trying to find out where are the performance hits that I'm taking. And so the biggest draw calls appear to be when I'm looking up at my little neon light there. And that's no surprise because we're using two interactive lights um, in order to uh, achieve this neon effect, all right? Uh, we're getting a decent frame rate here. I'm getting 80 frames per second, which is pretty good. Uh, target, we kind of want to probably hit about 60 FPS uh, for our worlds. And if we're not hitting 60 FPS, uh, then we're going to want to optimize the scene. And the fastest way to do that is to eliminate some of the draw calls, all right? So I'm going to turn, I think I'll leave the stats on, but I'm going to exit the game engine, all right? So currently, if I'm looking at my entire scene, I got 88 draw calls, all right? That's kind of high. So what I want to do is I want to introduce you guys to another concept, which is called light mapping. And what light mapping does is it allows you to take all your interactive lights in your scene and bake them down to texture maps that then just get texture mapped onto your object. Uh, the other cool thing about light mapping is it allows you to use final gather and global illumination, which can actually improve the lighting of your scene um, over uh, using interactive lights, which is what I currently have right now. All right, so I want to show you how this works. So notice my draw calls are at 88. Okay, that's kind of high. So what I want to do is I want to bake my scene lighting down to light maps. And the way this works is I'm going to just close this guy off real fast so I can show you where it comes from. Uh, the way this works is we're going to go to window and then light mapping and it opens up this little dialog box here. Light mapping is where we go and bake all our lighting, our interactive lighting down to uh, non-interactive -inter lighting and we optimize our scene. We're going to drastically reduce these calls. So I currently have 88 draw calls. Okay, the way this guy works is we have an object view and this is where we can kind of pick and choose what things we want to include in our um, <clears throat> in our light baking. Uh, we're just going to use this with all for now. And then you can also clear if there were any light maps present, so I could clear them. And you can see here we have a button here called Bake Scene. And so Bake Scene is where basically uh, that's how I engage the, uh, the light mapping engine to bake all our texture maps. All right, and then we have the bake window, and the bake window is where all our settings are stored for how our our uh, procedure is going to work. And then we have maps over here, and we'll get into those a little bit later. Um, if we need to use any light probes for any of you guys' projects, I'll show you how that works. But for now, I'm going to keep this simple. So I'm going to go into the bake tab. Uh, the first one uh, we want to use is first. You always want to start off using dual light maps. 
Uh, I had another scene where I was using dual and I was having some trouble with it and I ended up having to switch to directional light maps. Uh, single light maps are really not good. That's kind of low end. That's more for like uh, cell phones and uh, low end uh, online uh, type games. And so we're gonna we're gonna work here in dual light maps and directional light maps. All right. So I'm gonna start out with dual light maps, and if that works, I'm just gonna leave it there. And if I have problems, I'm gonna switch it to uh, to directional. Uh, I don't anticipate any problems though, so I'm gonna leave it right there at dual. The next button I want to always turn on is use in forward rendering and that's just going to make it compatible with uh, pretty much any platform. Quality, we definitely always want to use high. Bounces, bounces refer to the global illumination settings for your scene and I'm going to do this, I'm going to render this uh, a couple times to show you the effect of the bounce. The skylight color uh, is basically if you want to tint your scene um, to be a certain value that if once again if you had like a dynamic light source that was present in your entire scene you could tint everything in your scene to the sky lit color um, but that's not going to do anything right now because my sky lit light intensity is set to zero which completely factors that out all right we have a bounce boost and a bounce intensity. These are useful also with the global illumination bounces. And what these guys do is they actually um, will enhance the effect of the global illumination. You gotta be careful with those uh, because changing those by a little really drastically changes the scene. All right, we have final gather rays and these are basically kind of like the number of uh, rays that the final gather engine will cast out and back on your object. Uh, I was having pretty good luck with I changed this to like 2000. 1000 is a good place to start and then if you're getting artifacts and stuff you may have to crank this up higher. Uh, contrast threshold, this is kind of a little bit in the weeds. Um, if you're getting artifacts in your image we may have to go in there and tweak those settings. I don't want to tweak any of these settings though um, until we're we're well on our way, all right? So for now, I'm gonna leave these guys alone. Uh, the next one here, this one's kind of important. This is the resolution. And so uh, earlier in the video, I turned off show resolution. You guys remember that? And because it was kind of getting in my way. But if I go in here and look at the floor now, and let me get in the context of up close to one of these capsules, we can see this little checker pattern on our objects. What the show resolution does is it kind of shows the resolution of our light map. And so this is actually pretty dense here. And the resolution is set right here. So if I change that to 25, you can see here that my squares got a lot bigger. If I change that to 10, they got a lot bigger. And so you can kind of play around with this. Uh, the larger the resolution of your light maps, the faster your scene is going to play, the smaller the scene is going to be. The larger the resolution, the better it's going to look, and the the basically the file size is going to increase. Um, and so it's just kind of like you know we're going to have to figure out what resolution is optimal for your game. All right. For now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this at 50 because uh, it's going to look pretty good. Okay. Once I have those guys set up, that's kind of it. Um, in order to initiate the bake. All I have to do is click right here on Bake Scene. And it says Exporting to Beast. Da -da 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 -da. And it goes ahead and initiates the light mapping bake. This can take a long time depending on your settings. Uh, I had one take about 10 minutes. I had some pretty high settings on it. Uh, but before I initiate that though, I just wanted to show you how all that worked. And I'm going to cancel it, and then I want to clear all those maps out. And then I want to dock this guy, so I'm going to grab this little light mapping guy, and I'm going to dock it over here right behind my inspector. And before I go ahead and actually initiate my bake, I actually have to tell Unity what's what in my scene. So the way this works is we need to tell Unity what is a static object in my scene and what is a dynamic object. And the reason why that's important is because the light baking engine uh, 
is going to bake things that are static differently than it's going to bake things that are dynamic. In fact, it's not going to bake lighting for anything that's dynamic and it's only going to bake the lighting for things that are static. So this is pretty important. So I'm going to select on my main environment here, which is my Unity Cornell box and that's got all my objects in it. And then I'm going to come over here to the inspector and what we have to do is by default this would little static button here would not be checked. Okay, so I got to select for this is all the objects in my scene and I'm going to come over here in the inspector and I'm going to click on static. And then it's going to ask me because this is a prefab with a bunch of other objects under it, it's going to say do you want to enable the static flags for the child objects as well? Yes, I do. Everything in there. All right. Make those static. The first person controller is a dynamic object, so I do not want to have static clicked for that. The directional light is a static object, so I'm going to have, there's going to be a problem with that, which I'll show you, but I'm going to click static for now. And then I'm going to click on the point light, and the point light is also going to be static, and uh, my capsules are all going to be static, so I can select all of those simultaneously, and I'm going to make those static. And then I have my spotlight and my point light, and those are also static. So I'm going to click both of those guys and make them static. All right, now that I've told Unity what's what, what's static, what's not static, uh, now I can go ahead and initiate the light mapping. So I'm going to go into the light mapping tab, and I'm going to go ahead and say bake scene with the values that I just showed you. And it takes a little bit. It starts the GI calculation, so it's calculating the global illumination. This one should go pretty fast, so I'm, I'm going to just let it run so you guys can see how long it takes. Uh, as I change the settings, I might pause the recording so that you don't have to watch the renders all the way through. But for the first one, I want you to know, you know how long it takes. So we'll just sit here and whistle a tune or something. Okay, and the procedure is done. So that took, I don't know, a couple minutes. Um, and this is what we're left with. So if you come over here into the light maps, you can see here that it gives me all these values. These are essentially kind of like uh, cube maps of all the different lighting parameters as texture maps in my scene. And it does two different sets, one for near and one for far. So I, I think the engine will swap swap the maps out uh, whether you're near or far from the object the uh, near ones are probably higher resolution the far ones are lower resolution All right. now that I have my light maps rendered what I can do is I can come back here into my scene 
and I can select my lights and turn them off and if you'll notice when they were on it was giving the effect of the scene being much brighter uh, it was kind of double brightness uh, and if I turn those off it kind of goes now it's just getting the light light maps uh, one time alright and then I'm going to grab my direction of the light and my point light and also turn those off and now this is it our scene is being illuminated only with light maps and so there are no dynamic lights in the scene if you'll notice my draw calls in my game view have gone from 88 to 40 so that's pretty good I just cut my draw calls in half alright so let's go in here and check it out and this is where we get to look at it and say does it look the same or similar enough and you can see we got a little bit of artifacting going on uh, up there on my neon light and but overall it's actually not too bad so I'd have to do some tweaking there uh, if I wanted to, uh, wanted to perfect that um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone though because I want to show something else all right so pretty awesome the draw calls uh, just got cut in half so uh, that's a pretty big optimization all right I want to bake this scene again uh, but this time I want to I want to do a little bit different lighting method on my neon uh, sign there so I'm gonna kill the cookie light and the point light and just go ahead and delete those <clears throat> and then I want to just demonstrate the global illumination settings in the light map parameters. In order to do that, I'm going to have to increase the range here of my point light in the scene. And if you'll notice, it's not doing anything. And the reason it's not doing anything is because the light maps are t have taken over. And in order for me to see interactive lighting anymore, I actually have to clear those maps out. And then now my interactive lights will have an effect once I turn them on. All right. So I'm going to come in here and use this light. I want to brighten the room a little bit just so I can show you uh, the effects of the global illumination and final gather on the light mapping procedure. So I'm going to come in here and I boosted the light. And if you'll notice in my scene, I have a red wall and a blue wall. And this is a common uh, type of scene set up for uh, tweaking your lighting, uh, especially for global illumination and final gather. Uh, because having these walls with these primary colors is going to show me the bleed from uh, one wall, uh, the red wall, into the other objects in my scene. So I'm going to come back here into the light mapping and I'm going to rebake these maps. I'm not going to make you sit through that though this time. And so I'm going to bake. This time I'm only baking though with the point light, and so this one should go a lot faster. I'm still not going to make you wait though. Okay, the results of my uh, light mapping are complete, and everything's way, way too bright right now, and that's because I'm getting a double illumination effect. So if I go to my inspector and I grab my point light here, I can turn it off. And um, uh, actually, I was not getting a double. That's actually just how bright it is. Um, all right, so if you'll notice here, the reason why it did not change, if I select my point light here and turn it back on, I have actually set this in my light mapping settings uh, to under the light mapping to baked only. And what this does is it kind of permanently makes it so that uh, I don't get a double lighting effect here. Um, and maybe when I do this again, I'll, uh, I'll show, I'm going to turn that off and show you what, uh, what that means. Okay, so, and then I got my directional light here, my point light. I'm going to go ahead and enter my scene so I can show you the effect of the global illumination. And the reason I put these little capsules here is so you can see this very thing. So see I have a red wall here, and it's hard to tell on the top. We can see a little bit of red spill. Uh, but on the capsule, it's very obvious. We can see that the back of that capsule is red. And that's because... Final Gather and Global Illumination are actually allowing the light rays to spill into the room, bounce off the red wall, and then onto the floor and the objects around them, and thereby giving the capsule there a blue tint, all right? And I'm sorry, a red tint. And then on this one, we can see here that we have a blue tint. 
Uh, and that's the effect of the bounce settings in the global illumination. Uh, this is the most realistic computer lighting available to you. And so I strongly recommend using light maps in your scene uh, for many reasons. For one, it's going to look better because you're going to get Final Gather and GI renders. Uh, and then two, uh, it's going to optimize your scene. So it's kind of like uh, you need to light map your final scene. If you're doing interactive lighting, uh, you're just you're not getting as good a result as you could. All right, so I'm going to come back over here and. If you'll notice here, I also didn't render, I did not bake the light maps for the directional light because we're missing our shadow pools there on the floor. So I'm going to do this one more time and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn on my point light and my directional light. And this time I'm going to change these guys. So directional light, I'm going to come over here under light mapping and I'm going to change this from uh, baked only to auto. And I'm going to do the same thing on the point light here. So. Uh, baked only to auto. All right, and then here, this is where we can see that I'm actually getting a double effect. I have my light maps in my scene, and then the light itself is also contributing to the lighting in the scene, and so it's kind of a double, a double effect. And so that's what changing it to baked only does is it kind of automatically takes that out of the equation. So I just wanted to show that to you. All right, so I'm going to change those back to baked only because it's so much better. All right, and I want to take my point light down and I want to clear my light maps out. And my point light, I'm going to change the range here so that it's not so bright in my scene. I want to bring it kind of back down to that darkness that I had before. All right. And then I want to show you uh, part two. All right, now that you guys are aware of light mapping and how good it is, I want to do this neon light here one more time. And I'm, this time I'm going to do it with dynamic, or uh, not dynamic, I'm going to do it with multiple point lights to get the neon light effect uh, with the intention of baking uh, out to light maps. All right. So if you intend to bake out the light maps, you can kind of use as many lights as you want. So um, yeah, knock yourself out. Uh, use as many lights as you want, as long as you're gonna bake them out the light maps, you can just hide them at render time and you will have no performance issues and you can get a really, really good looking scene, All right? So I'm gonna come in here and this time, instead of doing the uh, two light setup, I'm actually going to do this neon light and I'm going to do it with like 12 point lights. So I'm going to come in here to game object and I'm going to say create other and I'm going to do a point light and I'm going to put it right in here. And in this way, I'm kind of building this neon lamp as if it was truly illuminating from the lamp itself. All right. And I'm using these point lights as kind of like uh, samples around this circle. Okay, so I'm going to select my first point light and I want to give it kind of like that deep blue color. Not quite bright because that's what it is right at the neon tube. I'm going to kind of bring it about halfway down, something like that. Okay, and then I also want to turn on shadows. So I'm going to say shadow type. And I want to turn on soft shadows. And if you'll notice there, now I'm getting a realistic shadow as it's being cast. That frame, concrete frame that the neon light is on is actually casting a shadow, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the rest of the neon light here by just duplicating this lamp. And I'm going to use kind of an ungodly number of point lights to achieve this effect. So I'm going to do like uh, four per quarter. All right. And then once I have half of it,
I can actually just grab all the middle ones and duplicate those over. All right, and you might be like, whoa, what are you doing? Why are you using so many lights? And I'm trying to prove a point here. So notice how we're getting these kind of realistic shadows here on my normal map on my wall. So the concrete itself is actually casting shadows. We're getting this nice soft shadow effect here on my capsule. And my capsule is also starting to be realistically illuminated um, from the light source here itself. All right. Now the cool thing about using all these lights in Unity is that you can just select them all at once and you can change their intensity at the same time. So if I want to, let's see, I think I did like 0.3 before, all right. And if I wanted to change their range, I could do that all at the same time also. So if I wanted to kind of have this light kind of overpower the lights around it for effect, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna over exaggerate it on this one. Okay, and then uh, what else? Soft shadows, I could change the shadow strength if I wanted to. And the cool thing about this is that this is actually 12 or 16 different lights all casting different shadows. And so we end up getting this nice, nice soft shadow effect. See how we have the capsule, the darkest part in the middle, and then this little fringe. That's because we have all those 16 lights kind of casting different shadows and it just gives a really nice realistic soft look to the environment. All right, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play test this and it should kill my computer. Not really, but let's just get in there and look at it. Oh, that's really pretty. A little too bright, right? As I get up to it. And so I wanna come back in here and change my intensity settings a little bit less. Uh, maybe range wise also I'll bring that down a little bit bring that down to 12 and then the intensity will bring it down to uh, 0.15 to about half all right and then I'm going to go in and play test it again check it see if I like it still got a nice shadow there on the capsule that's nice oh that looks really good uh, you know what I'm pretty happy with that for now for the intents and purposes of showing you guys how this works. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks like a really nice neon sign. Okay, we're ready to bake that out now as a light map. So now that I like my settings, I'm gonna come in here and under light mapping auto, I'm gonna also change that to baked only. And what that does is it just makes it so I don't have to constantly remember to turn the lights on and off after I bake my maps. Uh, which is kind of useful. It just once those maps are present, it automatically turns those light uh, the lights off, basically. All right. Now that I have my lighting tweaked out the way I want it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into the light mapping light mapping uh, tab. I want to clear all my previous light maps. Uh, this time, I'm going to change my final gather settings to 2,000. And I'm going to up my number of bounces to three, which is going to increase my global illumination settings and my global illumination quality. And then I'll leave everything else the same. Maybe, maybe I'll take this down to the texture resolution to 35. Uh, and then that's it. I'm going to go ahead and bake my scene out. And I'll pause it so you guys don't have to watch the whole. We'll sit there and wait for the whole render. Okay, that's it. My uh, light baking is complete. There's my light maps right there. And uh, now I can go into the inspector and turn off all my point lights. If you'll notice, when I turn my point lights off, there's no difference in the scene. And that's again because I'm using this setting right here under light mapping, baked only. And when you do that, you don't have to turn your lights on and off each time. Um, alrighty, and then I'm gonna come in here and turn those off same deal i had those on baked only so it made no difference all right and then i'm going to come in and play test my light maps make sure that everything looks cool 
Coming over here to my neon lamp. Oh, that looks pretty good actually. Right on it, we got the glow effect. Uh, it looks very natural here on my capsule. I got that nice soft shadow. Uh, that looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and then the one thing I do want to do here is after uh, after I render this thing out, I want to recook my reflection map to update the changes. And in this case, when I do this, I do want to turn all my point lights off and all my interactive lights off because of, uh, I believe they will uh, affect uh, this capsule. So I'm going to select the capsule here and I'm going to go to Tools, Generate Cube Maps on Selective. Give it kind of a dark, I want it to be kind of like a chrome. And in this case, I might go higher. Let's do 1024 by 1024. Generate cube maps, and then I want to turn off use. Whoops, no, I want to turn off show resolution in my scene view so that I can see my reflection map. Oh, that looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump into the game to test it out. And I'm pretty happy with that. That definitely looks like a neon light. Alright, cool guys. Uh, so I want you to keep working on your projects. Uh, hopefully, uh, by now, some of you guys might be <laughs> deciding to scale back. Um, if you if your lighting ends up like this, with uh, as dynamic as I've seen some of your scenes, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to look pretty cool. All right. So good luck with everything, and uh, I will see you in a couple weeks. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on the Facebook group. All right. Talk to you later.